So hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my very small YouTube channel. My name is Isabelle. I am in France. I have three sons and I have three cats. Some say it's related. And I'm uh, filming these videos about knitting, mostly knitting in English because I miss my English very, very, very much. I used to live in the United States, but that was 30 years, over 30 years ago. And I miss talking in English. So uh, this is my uh, own way to practice at least once a week talking in English. So today it's going to be about my knitting adventures. You may hear that I'm quite congested and uh, I've been quite sick, not COVID. I've always been testing negative, but anyway, I have very big headaches and cough. So uh, I may have to interrupt um, to be coughing, but uh, if uh, um, all this uh, program about my knitting adventures, which, which is going to be quite a lot of things and uh, uh, sounds good to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so I have a few things that I have on the paper uh, not to forget to be talking about before I go into my, um, uh, my projects. Um, one first thing, I'm wearing my Lorenzon sweater. I will link it down below. I will link my project down below. You, um, you have already seen it several times. And I am wearing my little um, heat wave scarf. Uh, so the Lorenzon sweater is from Lily Kate and the heat wave from uh, Pia Trans, uh, who is um, 50 fabulous and uh, um, on YouTube and Ravelry and everywhere. And it's, uh, uh, this one is in uh, um, mohair silk from uh, La Bien Aimée. And as you know, as I'm sick, or I have been sick and it's, you know, the first day uh, after um, uh, I have been very, very sick and still teaching, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep my, uh, my throat warm and I will pause here because my baby cat is asking for me to open the window. Okay, so he's in. I hope he won't ask me to go out and in and out and in too many times because that's what he likes. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, wearing my uh, heatwave scarf and it's one of my finished objects and I will be talking about that uh, a bit later. So I want to uh, recall once uh, one thing. I am not. It is very important to me to thank people. And uh, uh, last time I said um, I was knitting with uh, knit and pieces, and that someone had recommended it to me. And I want to thank Jean Jean Campbell, who was the one recommending me, recommending their channel to me. Uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, if I haven't had their channel come into my YouTube suggestions or homepage. So, um, yeah, thanks, Jean. And uh, if I don't thank someone who's, you know, recommending me something or pointing me to something, it's my mistake because I like to uh, give credits to people. Second thing I want to be talking about is that uh, I ripped out my uh, cropped cardi from uh, Noragon, the one I was knitting in cotton. Um, it was not the proper, not giving me the proper fabric and uh, uh, first, but I could have been, you know, going on with that. Uh, but second, I made a mistake and uh, several row down below. And uh, when I saw it, I, it was, I, I unraveled. And uh, yeah, so I was saying, sorry for the telephone interruption, um, that I, uh, I, you know, uh, went down to try to correct my mistake. But um, with the twisted stitches pattern, it was very difficult. And... Uh, I'm usually quite good at fix, fixing mistakes, but um, this time I could not. And 
you know, I did not like the fabric it was giving me with the cotton. So uh, I ripped it out. I'll do something else with the cotton and I'll go back one, you know, sometime in the future to that pattern because it's on my list and I wanted really, I really wanted to knit it. Okay, so now that is that has been said, I will try not to forget any of the things I want to be talking about, about uh, talking about my knitting adventures. Okay, so finished objects. I have plenty, plenty small finished objects. First, my heat wave scarves. I've I've already talked about this. These, I guess. Um, uh, and uh, I talked about it uh, them also in uh, the Wooly News that was published uh, last week. I will try to remember to attach it here. Um, I've been on a small uh, scarf uh, trend. I, I hopped on that train. And uh, um, one thing is that uh, I did not buy a Petit Knits uh, Sophie scarf pattern because I... I did not want to knit a small scarf in garter uh, because garter stretches out uh, lengthwise. And even when I was very young, I did not like the way garter would stretch between those bumps that it makes and um, the, 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 um, how the way the fabric goes, recedes back from these bumps and gets elongated and the bumps do not get elongated. I don't like the way it looks when it's been stretched out. And I think, even though on pictures, I haven't seen that many times, but I think as much as you are going to be wearing it, it's gonna stretch lengthwise and I will have that effect that I do not like. So um, I, uh, at the same time, I was about thinking, you know, I would like to make one, but, um, this one, I don't, not things I don't like about and everything, even though everybody who's knitting it is uh, very happy with the pattern and everything. I'm sure it's really fine. It's just my own personal taste. Uh, Pia published the Heatwave scarf. So I knit two of them. So this one with uh, La Bien Aimée, which uh, Mohair Silk, will, which you will gonna be seeing feature, featured on a uh, next uh, uh, work in progress. And I made also this one with uh, Fonti um, Mohair uh, that I had uh, bought last um, winter to knit one of my sons, uh, Bini, my youngest uh, Bini. Uh, maybe it's better that way, you see it better. Um, I have two of them. Uh, I may be knitting additional ones uh, with uh, leftover mohair. I have only uh, these two mohair in my stash. Fine mohair, you know, small gauge, uh, almost um, a lace weight or even cobweb mohair. Um, one thing is, you see, this one, this one I haven't been wearing that much. This one I have been wearing a lot because as I was sick, I wanted to be warm in my throat and in, in front of my chest. And you see the part with the ribs, uh, the ribs is getting all scrunched up and it's becoming very small here. And when I blocked it, I was thinking maybe it's gonna be happening. So I like very much the idea, either you knot it or you know, you if you don't want to be bulky in your throat, you pass one, you know, you thread one of the ends um, in one of the increase um, your lovers, and then you don't have a bulky part around your neck and it's still, you know, attached and it won't move and everything. So that's fine. That's, I like that. I like that idea. I like the way. It feels, I like the look of it. I like the big <laughs> bunny ears at the end that you can tuck into a, a, um, a shirt and be warm uh, around your throat and your neck and the front of your chest. But thing is, I think it's, you know, once you start wearing them, 
a lot and I think I will be wearing them a lot. Uh, the small spot part around your neck is going to get smaller and smaller and unless you wash it again and you uh, block it again open and and then it's going to get smaller and smaller again. So while I was knitting them, I was thinking about that. And while I was knitting them, I was thinking about what do I want in a small scarf? Because everybody is jumping on that bandwagon. I'm too. And, uh, you know, I've already also talked about that in my Woolly News from last week. I've had small scarves like that for forever. And, uh, I, you know, I knotted with, you know, I, I showed it last week. Um, you make, can make a bow uh, on your side. Yeah, I've, I've had silk scarves that are narrow and long for a long time. So it, there's nothing new. Um, fashion goes, <laughs> goes in circles and everything that has been fashionable at some time comes back and be fashionable again. Uh, but anyway, what was I thinking? What did I want as a small scarf? So I wanted something that would be not very wide on my neck. I could make two rounds around my neck that would not crunch up on itself when I wear it and then, you know, be very thin around here. And uh, um, that I could accommodate uh, a wide, wide range of yarn weights to use some of my stash to knit um, Christmas presents. Because mohair, for the young people in my life, it's going to be difficult to be taken care of. So I wanted also to be able to knit with something that will be very easy. Uh, throw them in the washing machine and um, be done with it. So I first started, so I have already, um, I have already talked about this one, but I have made two now. Um, so let me see, when did I uh, finish these? Um, I finished that at the end of August, yes. So it's the Sweet Little Scarfet by Emma O'Brien. So I made two because my youngest son was uh, at home last weekend. My second son is at home also too. And we went all together to a restaurant to celebrate my second son's uh, 25th birthday. And uh, my uh, last son, when he saw that, he said, yeah, um, my girlfriend, we like it, sure, but I want one too. Okay. So I made, I made a second one for him. So they will both have for Christmas. I hope he's not watching. Um, the uh, Sweet Little Scarfet by Emma O'Brien. And it's, uh, you knit it in the round. So it's, it's very warm. Yeah, that's what I like. It's very warm. It won't crunch, crunch on itself and become very small once you wear it. It has a very nice style. You can wear it on the side. Um, and my son, you know, placed it that way and he can wear it in his um, uh, sweaters or whatever. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, this one is fitting my needs. But what I did not like, you, you're going to tell me I'm never happy. No, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm never happy. It was okay for me to knit in the round and I made a second one because... He wanted one. So what is that? Okay, I have to see. Oh, there was a knot in the, in the yarn. Um, I did not enjoy knitting in the round for that long. <laughs> this is maybe why I don't need socks. Uh, but anyway, so I I knitted that with, you know, it's been, it, it went down quite a bit because I've made a couple things now with that with that big ball of mostly acrylic yarn. It's, I guess it's, I do not recall if it's eight or 12% wool and, you know, 80 something percent uh, acrylic. So 
There's, I, I washed it in the machine to see how it was going. Good. It's going, it's fine. And uh, you let it dry out and they're going to be happy. So I guess if I don't enjoy, I did not enjoy knitting that in the round, maybe that's why I don't need socks. Anyway, so that's a present for my youngest son and um, his girlfriend. So I have a work in progress that uh, I will, uh, I am knitting uh, for uh, his girlfriend too. Okay, so that was the first, uh, I'm not sure I did knit the little scarfette or the um, heat wave scarf uh, before that. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I guess I knitted the, I, at the same time, sort of. Okay, so that's four small finished object. Um, then I was thinking, wait, what am I expecting for a small scarf? So, okay, not too big on my neck, but not too small. It doesn't, you know, it becomes very small the way this one is. Uh, long enough so that I can uh, make two rounds around my um, my neck and a pointy end. Maybe not a pointy end like this one, a pointy end because I liked the pointy end uh, of the Sophie scarf. So I made one with the same yarn, the same mostly acrylic yarn. I made one as a sample. On one by, by one rib, you slip the last stitch at the end of the row, so it makes a clean um, end. I am going to be talking about the pattern here, and I made a pointy end. So I knitted long enough so that I can go twice around my neck, show a pattern or not. You know, it can be inside and hidden. And I have two little pointy ends that I can, still can tuck in my shorts. This is what, ex exactly what I was expecting from a small scarf. So I made one and I made a second one with the same yarn. Um, for a co-worker who is retiring and I'm going tomorrow to her her party so that uh, and I use the same stitch pattern so this stitch pattern is from one of my uh, I have two books of uh, Japanese um, stitch dictionary um, I, I link it down below and this is one of the uh, patterns um, I thought of this pattern because I was looking for something that would be small that you can knit um, either. At the first time I was thinking I was going to repeat it all over, but I did not. It's only on one end. Both of them, it's only on one end. And I like the wrap stitches that remind me of the Madeleine sweater that I knitted. And uh, um, yeah, so I liked it that way. And I was thinking maybe, maybe I will make some, you know, find some other stitch motifs and, and knit that that way. I modified the pattern from the book because the pat in the book, the center stitch is a pearl stitch. And uh, when I first knitted it, my center, I have an odd number of stitches. You need to have an odd number of stitches to knit that pattern. Um, the center stitch was a lead stitch, so I did it that way. And I wrapped it three times instead of twice, as the pattern uh, calls for. Anyway, any kind of small small stitch pattern will work. On a one-by-one one rib, that won't collapse on itself because the yarn is thick enough to hold on itself that I can wrap twice around my neck. That has a small decoration that is completely optional and a small pointy end. So I made two um, and as I was filling my rubbery pages for this, uh, these two little scarves, 
I was getting quite frustrated to just say, my pattern, my pattern, it's not on rubbery. No, 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 no. So first, so first, after making that one, finding the little motif, thinking of the Madeleine sweater that I like, I said, okay, I'm going to make another one with um, the same yarn as the Madeleine sweater. So it's a uh, Holzgarn tied held double uh, in pearl, the pearl colorway. So this is, so you see it's completely reversible. So this is the one I made with a Holzgarn tied held double. And, you know, I, I made a picture with the Madeleine sweater. And once again, <laughs> when I filled out the Ravelry project, I was, you know, my own, my own pattern, not on Ravelry. And I was getting a bit frustrated uh, with that. So um, I had been thinking about writing patterns for a long time, but I don't have the time. I don't. I, I really don't. Um, but I had sort of prepared sort of a template um, with all the information I needed to uh, place. So um, I did use that template, wrote down my notes and see, I don't, anyway, I'm not sure I can <laughs> make it the way I like. Anyway, um, uh, wrote down my notes and placed a couple pictures and see how it was going. And I thought, yeah, it can be published. Um, it can be published. So uh, as uh, my inspiration, it, it did not come out of thin air. I had several inspirations uh, for uh, that little scarf, that trendy little scarf. This is the way I called it. You know, I, I've already said um, Petite Knit with her Sophie scarf, Pia Trance with her Heat Wave scarves. So I published it as a free Ravelry download. Um, I still have to contact um, the editor of the uh, Japanese Ch Stitch Dictionary to uh, ask them if I can uh, publish uh, in the pattern, this, this motif in the pattern. So, so far I haven't. Uh, I haven't. Uh, placed it in the pattern. I think I can. I have had several discussions back and forth with uh, with uh, several people who say that that it is allowed to um, use stitch patterns from uh, stitch motifs from stitch dictionaries and use them in uh, um, patterns that we publish. Um, the copyright on the book itself. It's quite explicit about you can't uh, uh, reproduce, I guess, take pictures of parts of the book and publish it again. So I think that is forbidden. I'm fine with that. Um, but it, they do not say anything about using the stitch motif and incorporating into a pattern and you know, republishing the pattern. So I still have to contact them and ask them. That's the best way to do, I think, so that uh, I'm complying to what they want. Uh, but so anyway, for now, I haven't um, published. I gave the recipe. You know, if you go to the uh, pattern on rather reader, there are quite a bit of a discussion on the uh, on the scarf. So uh, I gave the recipe for it. It's, it's very easy. I, I guess you can find it everywhere. You just wrap three times stitches and then you you know move one one uh, or a couple stitch on each side and once you have four of them you decrease and you it makes some sort of a diamond it's it's very easy and this scarf fits my needs it doesn't collapse on itself it's it goes twice around my neck um, it has a pointy end and uh, uh, yeah, it uses 50 grams of yarn. Uh, so 50 grams of the tied held double. Um, I made one, I tried one with uh, a single thread of uh, strand of tied. And 
it's so of course it's smaller I, I can still go with that I made it just a little bit longer to see how it was going and you see that one will have the tendency once again to collapse on itself so I guess so I made the same motif and the little pointy ends uh, so I guess what I like is not a fingering or a light fingering scarf, more of a fingering or maybe DK will have to, um, I will have to, to test that with other yarns. And, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm also keeping that one uh, for myself. And, uh, you know, it's, it will have the tendency to collapse on itself. So, yeah, so I published the pattern a couple of days ago. Um, a lot of people were very happy I did so. Um, many people started to talk uh, on the pattern page on Ravelry in the comments. So uh, I've been answering all the comments. I like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess people were very happy to... Uh, get this pattern so um, yeah it, it's very easy I I did not you know make it up out of thin air there are many influences that um, uh, led me to um, write that down I, at first you know knit it and then write it down and and give it to the community because I think the community gives a lot to me and gives a lot in general and I know there are issues with uh, Ravelry and everything but still Ravelry allows a lot of people to gather on their website and um, have a lot of knitting activities you know it's a way to thank the community and uh, uh, also to acknowledge the fact that uh, it did not come out of, out of thin air and, uh, um, and I think anyone could have <laughs> <laughs> written that pattern. There is nothing, nothing, nothing really particular about it. So I will also link it down below and uh, I hope you will uh, enjoy it. And uh, if you do, if you do need it, please, please let me know. I will be very, uh, very curious to see what you end up with. Um, I have many projects with that little scarf and it's very easy to use. Uh, some of your um, some of your stash your leftovers um, and uh, that's what I intend to do and uh, uh, it's a very quick present uh, very quick knit you know I did not knit every you know each of them I knit maybe three nights and I knit maybe between two and two hours per night no more than that so um, it's a quick, it's a quick knit and uh, a good stash, uh, a good way to use your stash and leftovers. Um, a nice present, and uh, Christmas is coming up, and uh, you know you can adapt it to your liking and make any kind of stitch motif that you like. And uh, if the uh, editors of the book allow me to publish um, some of the patterns, I have. There are several other ones that I was uh, kind of interested in testing in with that uh, pattern. So I will and uh, I will let me, you know um, how it goes. So yeah, that was the first long, long, long first point uh, with my finished objects and my uh, trendy little scarves. Okay, next. I do not think I have any other scarves on my needles. Next, and maybe I should start with that one. I said um, that I was um, knitting a muscle burr for uh, my youngest son uh, girlfriend. So I'm using once again some yarn that my mother gave me. So this, still this big <laughs> big uh, acrylic ball of yarn so um, uh, I've already made the first half 
And second, this um, yarn that feels acrylic to me too. Uh, I'm not sure how what the percentage of acrylic is inside uh, because um, there is no bowl, but it doesn't look like yarn or at least the same way. Maybe there is 10% of yarn in it, in that gray color. And uh, it's going to be a two color uh, muscle burn. So uh, maybe you recall the one I knit with uh, that skein of uh, La Bien-Aimée's uh, Merino Single. I like, I, I, you know, I'm considering unraveling and doing it again because I used um, the regular adult size for that um, muscle bra I made for myself and it's way, way too big. So that time around, I, I chose the adult small uh, size. It, I guess it's called child and adult small. Uh, so so um, yeah, and it's finishing much better. So you know, I'm thinking about unraveling my my own muscle burr and knitting it again with the same yarn, but one size smaller because it's very wide, so it doesn't hold on itself. If I roll uh, the brim up or the end up, uh, it's all wonky. Um, I placed an elastic, uh, invisible elastic, uh, in it. So that I can wear it slouchy and it's uh, tight on my, you know, the, the first part of my head, but it's quite big on the last second, you know, the last part of my head. So, um, yeah, I was thinking I may unravel it and knit the small adult uh, size. And uh, so I will be trying, I've been trying out this one and it's, it's, it's okay. So with, you know, the one little stitch marker, my son, uh, Theo, uh, uh, gave me for Christmas and uh, yeah so it's gonna be one side uh, white one side gray and that's my first work in progress okay my second work in progress one I really love and that has been put on the back burner unfortunately with all the attention around the small trendy my little uh, uh, trendy scarf pattern publishing look at that so this is my sorrel sweater i had yarn in my stash for that for a long time knitted with uh, la bien aimé singles merino singles held with uh, the same uh, la bien aimé um, uh, mohair and silk this one fall down sorry so uh it's a pure delight to knit and look at. I stopped knitting. I haven't been knitting for a whole week or week and a half on that one because of all the, you know, frenzy around uh, the little trendy scarf pattern. Um, I'm just absolutely loving the effect of uh, the air guitar colorway. You know, as I was knitting, I was thinking I may decide, I may want one other one just with air guitar, no fade. I should have bought only. And see, you know, I decided to see what the pulling would be doing. Look how it pulled around the next section. It's absolutely fabulous. So I guess it's just a change between the number of stitches, the repeats, and uh, uh, the way the yarn, the dye, uh, and the colors happen in that very skin. So it's just absolutely marvelous. And, uh, you know, I said I may move my beginning of row uh, so that uh, the two spirals around the corner, uh, around the color, you know, show the way I like it best. So that's uh, air guitar, and uh, I'm moving into, oh, I do not recall, I will write it down, my, oh, I guess it's Storm. My next skin that uh, La Bien Aimée recommended me because I did not like um, the Fiori, I made the muscle burr with it, um, it was too light, so I'm moving to Storm, um, and I've been, you know, knitting maybe a couple of rows only. 
and I started <laughs> changing the colors so that the first, at least the first <laughs> motif here was still in air guitar <laughs> because I like this colorway so, so, so very much. So you may recall, oh, I don't have them here. I will write down and I will link to um, the post where, the blog post where um, uh, you can see all my other yarns. Uh, it's going to go uh, darker gray and a very, uh, I, I'm finishing with, um, I guess it's Winterfell, uh, with the same um, very dark blue uh, color, Winterfell, and I'm not sure I recall which one is in the middle. Um, I, I will look because I think it's important. So, okay, after Storm, my next color is going to be Sosu. Kind of similar, but bit, with a bit more blue in it. And uh, the last one will be the North. All of them still held with uh, the Winterfell colorway in uh, silk mohair. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I would like you to be able to touch the finished fabric with uh, these yarns. The yarns are absolutely beautiful. It's my first time knitting with La bien -Aimée. If you uh, accept the fact that uh, I knitted the <laughs> muscle burr because I thought um, uh, the colorway was not going to be fitting into my fade, but um, it was too pink and too light. And uh, uh, yeah, it's an absolute delight um, all the fame and all the hype around La Bianine's yarn is totally, totally justified. Um, absolutely beautiful. These colors are magical. And um, I guess I can say, I think it's going to be one of my most stunning knits. I don't know. It's just magical. It's pure magic. And um, the pattern, the, the Sorel pattern, uh, is quite <laughs> popular because, you know, when I um, did my little giveaway, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it so that the front is that way. The giveaway, uh, the pattern was, the Sorel pattern or the Summer Sorel was uh, requested um, was the most had the most requests and for a reason it's a very 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 beautiful pattern and you know talking about the giveaway <laughs> I had never given a pattern on Ravelry <laughs> so uh, when one of the um, winners uh, contacted me her username on Ravelry is one letter away from a common usual name in word and I think my uh, browser auto-corrected it to that common word so I gave the pattern to someone who's not been active since 1910 uh, 2010 has zero pattern in their library anyway so I contacted Ravelry they replied back I they can't do anything so I bought the pattern again anyway Good for <laughs> wooden pine um, because they deserve we buy um, their pattern and you know they have our support. So you know I was not I was mad at myself, not mad at all. Uh, you know. Anyway, uh, a very beautiful pattern. I encourage you to knit that sweater. Either the winter version, that's the one, the original version. They came up with a summer version. They have a child version. And, uh, you know, I'm even, even thinking to make so, sort of a color, the same way I knit the scraggy color from Meret uh, Bridgeburger, uh, with that pattern. It's so, so, so beautiful. And associated with uh, La Vienne Inez yarn, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I need one repeat and I stop and I and I'm just looking at it and watching at it and I thinking I'm thinking it's really fabulous. It's gonna be fabulous and I don't like to um, 
not say put, push myself forward because you're gonna tell me, hey girl, you have a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. Um, but um, it's more, you know, we have a good old conversation and I'm talking about what I'm doing and, you know, maybe it gives you ideas and I'm, I'm just very happy with that that way. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't like to push myself forward too much. So, um, uh, yeah, but this one, these yarns, and what happens here on the collar and on the yoke with air guitar, I, I, I you know, I hide, if you hide, like, you know, pops of color on a dark background, air guitar is a fabulous, fabulous color wave. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so very happy and I will be going back to be knitting on it again because uh, now that all the frenzy around uh, releasing the pattern has gone away, um, I'm going to go back to knit on that. One thing is I can knit only when there is daylight because it's dark and I don't see anything in dark. Even though I have my lights, my neck, la le neck lights, um, dark, dark yarn, even on when I put a white towel on my lap and a light, it, uh, it, it, it hurts my eyes too much. So uh, I'm going to be dedicating my evening knitting to uh, light colorways to make, uh, you know, more scarves for people from my life and my family and uh, for Christmas and uh, maybe have a few, in a, you know, I have, have a few in my uh, pile of uh, scarves that I've made that I can gift, you know, on the go. Um, yeah, so that's uh, my sorrel sweater that I love, love, love. And uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the two person who won the pattern last uh, last episode, last uh, um, last time I published an episode, to let me know what's uh, happening. Okay, so uh, to finish, an acquisition, stash acquisition. You're going to tell me, well, you are a no buyer. Yes, I am. Um, I haven't bought yarn. Uh, Theo. Uh, who is at home for a week. He took a week off uh, uh, to stay one week at home here so that we can celebrate his own birthday and everything. Uh, was the week before that on a, at a seminar in uh, Cardiff, England. And, you know, I said to him, it's going to be my 60th birthday, not that far from now. Bring me yarn from there, any kind. I just trust you, you do whatever. So he kind of called me, sent me pictures and everything. So he got me, but you know, I sort of said, okay, to these yarns, but I, I, I wanted him to be choosing. So I gave him um, a composition. I said, I don't want acrylic, I want just uh, wool. And you know, what's gonna be easy for me to knit it, uh, either fingering or decay. So he got this uh, mariner, uh, pure wool merino. Uh, it's 100 gram, so it's super wash. Um, uh, it's a decay, so I guess somewhere I have, it's not on all the, on the balls. I have the metric. I guess I, I had to look on the site. It's uh, 280 meters for 100 gram. So I have two skeins of that white and uh, gray um, color. And this aspect of the yarn, um, once again, I've been influenced. So when he sent a picture of the booth uh, or uh, the sh shop, uh, I saw that immediately. And there was a black and white and a gray and white. And uh, uh, you may have seen that um, uh, Little Red Mitten have, um, so it's a store in Canada, uh, have a very popular sock yarn that is looking like that. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop and cough. So yeah, I was saying that they have, Little Red Mitten has a very popular colorway, um, knits and pieces, and other people have used it to knit socks. You know, I don't knit socks. And uh, uh, well, maybe I will one day. And I was thinking, yeah, maybe um, need some 
thing like a shawl or a scarf or you know just a, a sleeveless top uh, I, I i really wanted that type of colorway so um he got me two balls of that and in addition without me really asking for that he got me one ball of each of these colorways so this one is cobalt i think yes this one is caramel cobalt caramel and this one is what are we cherry so not that, now it, with the same you know the same yarn so now that i have all of these with these ones i've been looking for patterns <laughs> to be knitting all of them together yes yes i could i could knit them separately and make little scarves you know a little scarf in red that would be just fabulous to go with my lipstick good and uh, um so i've i have my eyes on a couple patterns from my library for now i've just been looking into my own library to make something with these yarns that he's gifted me. The first time my sons gift me yarn, over, even though you know I had told them you can buy me yarn that will make me happy, um, because but I guess they it's difficult for them to choose and they don't know what to do and sometimes yarn is very expensive. This one was not too much, so uh, very bold colors that you know I may not have chosen myself, but I will make them work and I will need that and I will have a piece, a little piece part of Theo uh, on me. So I will be wrapping that up today and of course in my thank you uh, that I wanted to do at the beginning of this video I forgot of course because not all of that was on my little piece of paper. It's in my little notebook that I really sent with her summer a mystery box so uh, i want also to thank you uh Jeannie and lorian who's um have been suggesting patterns because last time i said i was going to knit color work with my mohair which is not usual and someone also commented that that was an idea that they may be following uh, so uh both of them suggested pattern um patterns uh continuity uh, Ginny, thank you very much. And the Soldotna uh, from uh, Lorian who su suggested it. And I have to say that the Soldotna, I had not thought about it. Um, I've seen it, you know, many places and many people uh, knit, are currently knitting it or have knitted it in the past. Um, I get the articles even uh, with the Soldotna. So, uh, you know, the knitting place um, showcased it last time and uh, they uh, both knitted, uh, if I recall correctly, they both knitted one or maybe more for the shop and there is another one on their needles. So, um, yeah, the soldot now I did not think of and I've placed it quite high on the list of the patterns I may be knitting with the mohair. So, uh, but I have to see because, um, so that the center part and the, uh, I, I have a light gray um, uh, color work, color for the body. So I have dark gray, white, and very light pale ice blue. So I'm, so I have to see if I can place these three colors with the Soldotna pattern so that it can showcase all of the colors. Um, so I have to play with the color work, what I see from the pictures and see what with my own yarn and see how it goes. But uh, that was a very good suggestion and it's top, the first one on my list of things to need with my mohair. So uh, with that said, I'm not gonna talk about my mother. It's not going that way anyway um but uh yeah uh, i hope this episode brought you some joy and happiness um because we do need to actively place happiness into our lives because it's not going to come all by itself and uh, you know 
no one is gonna do, be doing it for us. So uh, yeah, I hope you do place um, uh, happiness into your life, and I hope I hope your knitting is bringing you joy, and uh, that uh, it's kind you can escape uh, in your knitting plans and fantasies, and uh, you know knitting your stitches. And uh, yeah, I thank you very much for spending that time with me. Uh, I guess I will place a few pictures of an um, event I went last weekend. It's a festival, it's called Cidre et Dragon, Ciders, Cider and Dragon. So we are in Normandy, we have apple cider is one of the staples from Normandy. Not dragons, <laughs> but this festival is about, uh, you know, cosplays and people who costume and uh, uh, more, more on the dragon and medieval theme. But this year, steampunk was the theme, theme and we did not have that event for two years. And it was a very, very big event. And uh, yeah, I'll try to play some pictures because some of the people, you know, were just incredible costumes, were just incredible and I had a very good time. It was a bit chilly, not too much sun, but no rain. So yeah, if I remember or if there is enough time, I'll, I'll place a few pictures at the end of this video that you're going to be watching right now and uh, I will see you next time.